Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage here at reInvent annual conference for AWS. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, your host. It's our 11th year covering reInvent. It's been quite the journey and we've watched the evolution of the cloud just continue to grow. This year, it's been really a big story around generative AI. That's the next function, step function level of change. The industry over the past year has been talking about how data and how generative AI specifically is changing the expectations of users and also how applications are being built. We've got a great guest here, Angela Shippey, who's a senior physician executive AWS, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So obviously healthcare and life science is a huge market for generative AI. In fact, I was uh, at an event and we were talking about uh, you know, entrepreneurship and all the hot startups and all the LLMs, and one of the CTOs of a, of, of, an, of a big company said, actually it's the regulated industries they're actually taking advantage of because they did all the rules, took advantage of all the, the compliance is kind of set up, so a lot of, they have a lot of data kind of labeled and it's kind of low hanging, a lot of low hanging fruit and I said, that's an interesting perspective. So healthcare, fintech, uh, oil and gas, a lot of these verticals are actually pretty well set up for generative AI. Uh, is that the case or is it, was I, <laughs> I mean, what's the current state of the gen AI in, in healthcare? Sure, so one of the things I'm hearing when I have the opportunity to talk to healthcare customers is they're talking about three big areas that are important to them. So one right now is what's happening in terms of the cost of care, between labor costs, between what's happening with supplies, and, the, and also with the cost of care itself. So being able to look at generative AI is going to help them. So, and being able to look at just AI and ML alone. So let me give you an example. If you want to have a better idea of what kind of workforce you need, how many people do you need on shift at that time? What supplies do you need? Predictive analytics can help you get there. And then over time, being able to look at yeah. what happened during that time of the year, during that time of the day, and then you can help better control those costs. Another area where we're seeing healthcare providers really talk about this is with their workforce. The workforce is saying, I want to be in an environment where I have the training and tools that I need right at my fingertips. It's another area where you can use generative AI to do that. So one of the things you can do is some of those repetitive tasks, the ones yeah. that are duplicative, you can take those away with Gen AI. So then they can work at the top of their license, which we know is really important for worker resilience. And then the third area are the patients or the consumers, depending on where they yeah. are on the healthcare <laughs> continuum. One of the things we can do for them now is really yeah. personalize the care just for them. Yeah providing insights that are at the fingertips of the healthcare worker, and so that patient feels like they're talking right to yeah. me and what's important to me. So those are three big ways already that are going to really change what's happening in healthcare. And that's interesting you brought up those three things. I mean, I just was talking to Julie Sosa from the sports team and said they have the same kind of thing. You got the athletes, patients, how to run the team, management, mm -hmm. and then the facilities. Right. Kind of the same integrated dynamics that were usually siloed in the past. Um, can you give some examples of um, people putting this in action now? Because I, mean, I can imagine the productivity gains and efficiencies gained from this, probably pretty significant. Right, so later on today, I'm going to be a moderating session that's going to talk about sudden cardiac death. And one of the reasons why the organization who we play for is able to tell um, schools, school districts, health, um, excuse me, healthcare organizations, as well as sports teams, who might be at risk is because they've been able to take thousands of EKGs, yeah. run them through a computational model, and be able to yeah. say who's at risk. And so they're going to be talking about that today, talking about how they're using AIML to mm -hmm. provide that information, and then the healthcare provider is going to be talking about how that's utilized. Yeah. So being able to see several organizations come together. So we talk a lot about can you learn from different industries? You yeah. absolutely can. And I think healthcare does a really good job of looking to other highly regulated um, industries like FIN, looking at the government, looking at you know, the automobile industry. They're looking to others to mm -hmm. say, how can we use technology that they've already yeah. used and implement it to help take better care of patients? Yeah, that's a great call out point. We, we, we've been hearing this this year at reInvent that, and even came up in the keynote briefly, it's working with other data sets, not necessarily your own. You mentioned that, so like, you can just look at that. And again, this came up in another conversation yeah. where it's like, you can look at data from the geography an area, that's in your data, and, and mix and match 
data from other sources. Not in a data marketplace way to like sell, but like no. just for insights. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so if you think about, that's why we get so excited about <laughs> HealthLake. Yeah. Being able to bring in disparate data from lots of different sources, bringing it together. So now we have information. We can turn that information into true insights that help us have in healthcare, can help our customers have better analytics. That's HealthLake. Yes. So explain HealthLake real quick. So AWS HealthLake allows customers to bring in data from different sources, unstructured, turns it into structured data, that then can be put into, then you can use another service like <laughs> AWS QuickSight, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then you can visualize it yeah. and see yeah. what that is actually telling you. So you're getting insights from that data. Then you can use it for better operational efficiency, better clinical efficiency, how, do, how can you better take care of a particular patient population, where, what areas do you need to go to next? That's what you can do when you put services yeah. together. You know, the code whisperer thing, and too with Q, amazing opportunities for, I won't say creatives, because it's not a creative like a creative class, but uh, problem solvers. It could be anyone in the organization now. The democratization, yeah. again, overused word, is now in place, so anyone can identify something and use the data if they have the health lake and Q. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right with that. And we do use that word democratizing the data <laughs> quite a bit, but I think it's really It's important. really real now. <laughs> it's real and it's really important. Okay. So one of the yeah. things that healthcare organizations are saying right now is, I might be on the continuum of builder to buyer, but I can upskill and educate my organization. So we have over yeah. 600 courses online that, that can be accessed. Or you can have people in the organization who really want to upskill and get a certification. Or they come to some place like reInvent <laughs> where they can really yeah. engage live. And then whether they're going to be a builder or they just want to better talk to those partner vendors they're going to have collaborating with to help solve problems, they're ready to do it yeah. and they're better informed. Yeah, I mean, Angela, this is an exciting year for me, I tell you, because every reInvent, there's always well, good stuff, but there's rare moments in life where you have a, a major change and the word legit next level has been said probably multiple times on theCUBE past couple, couple months. This is next level stuff. This is not, I mean, go back five years ago. It was just coming out, you had APIs, you had apps. Mm -hmm. But now the entire game has changed. It's not just for coders. You got with Q, that brings that kind of business user code whisperer vibe. So code whisperer's going to do great stuff too, converting databases. So a lot of stuff that's old, antiquated, kind of either in place for regulatory reasons or maybe just they know it's secure, they don't want to touch it, right? Or, you know, you see this a lot in, in healthcare where it's like, there's a lot of ransomware because of it. So it's a lot of like older stuff laying around in the hospitals and the, and the institutions. And that's an opportunity to modernize. I feel like this is an opportunity to truly accelerate business. So now going to the cloud, adopting this technology, having the infrastructure ready so you can have whatever is the mm -hmm. next emerging technology, Gen AI and beyond, mm -hmm. that's what's happening right now in healthcare, utilizing all these services. So now that you can take different people in the organization okay. and make it easier to do their job. So now those resources in IT have tools at their fingertips so yeah. that it's easier for them to move forward. Yeah. Now look at how much more that they can do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the patient care too angle is really huge because one of the things that's been great on some of the consumer side is I got my iWatch, I got my health apps. Now you got AI for nutrition. Hey, make me a meal. I don't really like this food, but I want veg more vegetables. It got, you, it'll actually give you the recipes now. It's so good, right? <laughs> I mean, it, it sounds so easy, but it's convenient. So you have the, the patient or person and then this predictive, hey, I want to I sign up for that heart attack thing. I want to know, am I going to have one? As but. a physician, what we've always wanted to do is to really make the patient, the patient's family, and whoever their caregivers are, part of that healthcare team. So now we have these tools to make it easier, yeah. whether it's communication from the electronic yeah. health record, whether it's a, an app that they have that's going to further give them more information. How to, what should my diet look like? What should I be eating? Yeah. Um, helping them monitor their progress. This is what we've always wanted in healthcare, to really have a team taking yeah. care of that patient, and to do it outside of the four walls of whatever institution and, they're and, in. And you know, not, not to sound like it's more of an operational thing, but one of the challenges I've heard a lot of, on theCUBE is that preventative side of it helps clear the unwanted patients that shouldn't be in, in the facilities, make that more optimized and peaked for when they need it. Absolutely, absolutely. The goal would be to prevent disease from happening. 
So what's the coolest thing you're working on right now? That's because you're in a great area. It's got a lot of oh, change. So many great things. <laughs> so Give one us a of, few, few one highlights. Of, one of the coolest things working on right now are those organizations again who are really looking at predictive analytics. Very excited about that. Very excited about knowing when when. Um, a, a staff member's going into a shift, they know exactly what's coming and how it's going to go. So really excited to work with healthcare customers about that. Excited to work with healthcare customers who are saying, I now have those disparate data points coming together yeah. and I'm being able to use it to know exactly what I need to do for clinical efficiency. And that clinical efficiency is really important. It's eliminating waste, it's giving those mm -hmm. patients that personalized experience that they want and it's reinforcing the workforce so that they, that resilience is there. Yeah. The other thing I'm really excited about that some of our healthcare customers are doing is they're looking at what can we do to better make sure we have access to care to all populations, right? At AWS, we think it shouldn't matter where you live to have mm -hmm. good health, and so we're really helping with that by looking at health equ equity from a standpoint of the data, the access to care, mm -hmm. and what do we know when we bring all that together? So really excited about organizations who are using it right now to better understand the patient yeah. populations that need more help. You know, my daughter interned this uh, summer at One Medical, and and I didn't even know that One Medical is part of Amazon or kind of affiliated, but it brings up the personalization side of it and how the changing landscape is out there. Now it's not, not a One Medical question, but the idea is a lot of things are going on, organization with Amazon, but personalized care has been a dream too for a long time. And AI is the perfect storm for personalization because you have the data. So the question is, is the data set up for that? And what are uh, facilities doing, what are the providers doing for getting that data so it can be leveraged, because data sharing, but also insights, is from much, how, what data do you have? So tomorrow, um, I'm going to be in a session with Geisinger Health. Their chief technology officer is going to talk about why they're putting their electronic health record in the cloud. Part of the reason they're doing that is so they can get all of those data points yeah. and utilize yeah. them across the organization. So it's going to help them take better care of patients. So yeah. it's, it's absolutely So possible. they're doing it now? Yes. So I think that solves the whole siloed data problem. And the, and the benefit to users is what, access to other records to get insights around either pre-existing stuff or data, is that? Where? So the benefit is, you have all this information inside the electronic health record, and now it can be where it needs to be. So is the patient in the clinic? So in the clinic setting, you have the information you need. Are they in the acute care setting in the emergency room? Mm -hmm. Now you have the information that you need. Is it a visit just for um, other resources in the health system? All that data is when you, where you need it, when you need it to help the patient have better health care. I saw on the keynote, Pfizer was up there, huge story there. The organizations are getting cha changing a lot in healthcare and, 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 and pharma. What are some of the examples that you can point to that people can look to and say, that's the future scenario of a company. This is an example of what success looks like as they transition their company to this new level of opportunity. I'll tell you what, Healthcare is an ecosystem, right? Of payers, providers, um, life sciences, companies, all working together for better health and to personalize care. One of the organizations I really like from a provider standpoint is Baptist Health South Florida. One of the things that they've done is they've moved everything to the cloud. And their goal in doing that, again, across yeah. their business, whether it's clinical or business operations, they know what's happening and they can act quickly on behalf of those patients yeah. and the others that they serve. I had a chance to Adam Selesky for an hour before reInvent for a story and what came out of that was data is your differentiator. And he said that in the keynote and adaptability. Um, this, is the, this, this is what you get when you bring it to the cloud. Absolutely, there's a large part of the data right now in healthcare that's not being utilized yeah. to the extent that organizations would want, and that's what coming to the cloud can do. It can really make that data available to them. Final question, what should people do to take that step in the cloud? What's, uh, is it uh, <laughs> cultural, <laughs> is it physical, uh, uh, technical? What's the challenge? What's the advice you'd have for folks watching? They want to accelerate the journey to get that data in a place like a health lake or in a place where they can leverage it. I think one of the first things I would say is at AWS, we have for more than nine years had a dedicated healthcare and life sciences practice with people just like me who used to be a chief medical officer, a physician, a pharmacist, a nurse. So we've walked in the shoes of our customers. So as we start to come together, as we look at those mission and strategic goals, we understand what you're trying to do. As we work backwards and we collaborate on how we're going to get there, 
we're going to help you have those conversations, both within your organization and outside of it, so that you can really begin your journey of being in the cloud, so you're ready for the emerging technology. That's the goal. Angela, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE, sharing your insights. Love this topic. Uh, you know, hey, preventative. We need all, all the help we can get on theCUBE. Thanks for watching. More coverage after this short break. Back to the studio. More, we'll get back to the short break. <laughs>